It's July 30th, 2020. I was just outside today feeding and watering my lizards and in one of the terrariums I came across this nesting box that looked like it had been disturbed and so I think I have some lizard eggs in here that I'm going to dig up. This came out of a granite spiny lizard terrarium and I used the same size nesting box for lizards that are kind of small to medium size. Things like those granite granite spiny lizards, uh, collared lizards, leopard geckos. Uh, I've used them for uh, little lacertids and things like that before in the past. Other, All kinds of these little smaller lizards. This is the size that I go with. And what you do is you cut a little hole in the corner so that the lizard can go in and out but the rest of the substrate is covered inside and this helps to keep the substrate uh, slightly moist it doesn't evaporate the moisture doesn't evaporate out of it as quickly and it also helps to provide a little bit more privacy for the lizard so it's kind of a secure hiding place that they'll they can go into and lay their eggs the other nice thing about these uh, containers this size is when you buy them at the store for your lizards they come with these free mini cream puffs inside and so that's like a real bonus those are fun to eat when you're watching TV or whatever okay let's uh, let's open this up and see what we've got inside here so you can see how the well maybe you can't see let me try picking this up and showing you from the side a little bit but the earth inside is kind of mounded up toward one end and it's kind of disturbed here near the entrance and it's kind of sloping up over this way. When lizards lay their eggs, they kind of mound the earth over it in, inside these nesting boxes that we use. And uh, all this substrate is, is it's a, a mix, about equal parts of sand and peat moss. And then you uh, you mix it together real really well and you add a little bit of moisture so it feels slightly damp in your hand and then you just keep it that way for the lizards and it's really easy to keep it that way all the time during the summer when they're awake and breeding uh, all you have to do is every week or two just add just a little bit of water to it not much at all and it will keep moist the whole time so let's look around in here and see if we can find the find any eggs from this female You may have seen my other granite spiny video that I put up where they're doing a kind of a dance or something that is just kind of an interesting social behavior where the female was crawling underneath the male. I'll put up a link to that in the description below this, uh, this video so you can go check that out if you want to see what they look like and what they do. <laughs> so I just go carefully through with my fingers. I don't have to be too careful about anything except for putting pressure on the eggs. I don't want to squish the eggs. They're they're kind of soft and leathery, although they they're kind of um, they have a full feeling too. They're like a little balloon or something. You don't want to pop them and, and break them that way. <clears throat> Lizard eggs are interesting. They're Well, maybe we won't. Let's see. Maybe we won't have any in here today. I don't know. Let's look and see. Usually, when they do this and mound them up, though, I find eggs inside. But sometimes they just do testing digs, or sometimes they just go in and they scratch around a little bit, even if they don't need to lay eggs. Oh, here we go. Here's some eggs. Okay. So you can see the first few eggs. There are a couple of myths about eggs that are worth knowing. The first of these myths is that they can't be turned or moved and you know the side that's laid up has to stay up and so people will mark them with a pencil or whatever and that's just not true. They can they can be turned. You just don't want to do it all the time like a chicken egg or something. Um, but when you dig them up especially there's hardly any development inside at all. There, there's a little embryonic disc on the inside of the shell and uh, it won't bother the eggs at all if they're rotated when you set them. They'll, they'll hatch just fine. I'm kind of a clumsy person sometimes and many a time I have picked up an egg container during incubation 
to check on the eggs and dropped it accidentally or knocked it or bumped it or knocked the incubator and unset the eggs so they rolled <laughs> inside the substrate and every time they've been fine even when they were really far along in incubation. So they're, they're a little bit tougher than you might think. I'm gonna go ahead and start setting them in. We'll count, we'll see how many we got. Oh, let me mention what this substrate is that I'm putting them into. This is a product that I purchased these days called uh, Hatchrite. It's sold for incubating reptile eggs. And basically all it is is some kind of pre-moistened perlite. You can get perlite a lot of times at a garden center someplace because they use it for growing plants. It, <clears throat> When you buy your own perlite, then you need to mix it with water a little bit, about equal weights, water and perlite for most lizards. It does just great. And uh, But I've gotten a little bit lazy over the years, and I've, I don't know, I've gotten a little bit better hatch rate out of the, buying the hatch right than I used to get mixing my own. So I use the hatch right now. I've used, uh, the other thing that I've used is vermiculite sometimes but in mixing it kind of the same way or by hand where I just added a lot of water to it and then squeezed all the water out with my hand so it was just slightly damp but I really like this hatchrite stuff I've been using this for several years now and it's just simplified my life I can just scoop out what I need when I need it I keep it in a sealed container and then uh, I can put my eggs right on it I don't have to worry about adding a little too much or a little too little and it works great and it's not that expensive either and so I, I just set the eggs in there about halfway so that the bottom part of the egg is touching the, the perlite or the uh, hatchrite and that allows it to take up moisture through that surface and then the top part is exposed to the humid air so that the egg can respirate a bit it does have gas exchange going on while it's in there and I put them in these food storage containers like this. Let's see, it looks like I've got eight of them today. So that's great from this female. Um, and then the food storage storage containers, I just seal them tight with the lid. And then I don't have to touch them again until I've got babies running around in there and ready to take out. Um, this is another kind of a myth, similar to the one where you know people worry about rolling the eggs. In this case, what people do, and what I did even for a number of years, was because the person who taught me how to incubate eggs did it, is I would poke little pinholes in the lid so that some gas exchange could come through. Or other people will open the lid every day or two and then close it up again after you know 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes, however long they make up in their mind that they think is going to work. And however often they make up, some do it once a week, some do it every day. But none of that is necessary and it just complicates incubation. And it opens the door for problems. Because every time you pick up that, if you're me anyway it does, because every time I pick up that container there's a chance that I might drop it. Or I might bump it, right? And knock the eggs around. And I don't want to do that unnecessarily. Uh, even though I haven't lost eggs that way, it's still not a good idea. And I still almost always have a heart attack when I do it. You know, just So I try to avoid it as much as possible. So by sealing the container tight, I don't have to worry about moisture loss. When people you know, open their containers or put the pinholes in, that gas exchange is gonna cause the substrate to dehydrate slowly over time. The, air's, the water's gonna evaporate out of it. And the way around that that I used to use was I would weigh my containers every couple weeks and then top it off with a little bit of water to bring it back up to weight. And for chameleon eggs, that is a lot of messing with the eggs over a period of several months um, because they take so long to hatch. These eggs take a couple months. Most eggs take a couple months, but others take much longer. And so anyway, all we have to do is seal that tight. I prefer the containers with the clear lids so I can see the eggs well during incubation just by picking up the container. But this year with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, those containers are in short supply so I just had to get what I could get which are these solid lid containers. And so I snap the lid closed, and that lid will stay closed throughout incubation. It's Friday, September 18th, 2020, and I've got my first ever clutch of spiny granite lizards hatching. Let's 
pull them open and take a look. Well, that was quick. They all jumped right out of there, didn't they? How many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just wanted to take another look at the eggs, see how clean and white they are. I always like to point out this is how a lizard egg should look. So, you know, if when your eggs are laid, if they're kind of opaque and pinkish, then, uh, or kind of translucent rather and pinkish, then your females probably need more calcium or better lighting or some more D3, something like that. So it's just a way you can check on how your husbandry's doing when you're looking at your eggs. But these eggs look really good, clean and white. All right, let's go take a look at these babies. Okay, here's a little male. If you look at the, the base of the tail there, just below the vent, on video maybe you can just make out a couple of pale pink lines. They go down to about the second band on the tail. Uh, it's a little bit more obvious maybe on the left side than on the right, but maybe you can see it on both. I'll try changing the distance a little bit and the focus a little bit to see if we can get a little bit better image. Okay, but they're just kind of pale there, but they're definitely there. So that's a little male. Oh, there we go, now it's becoming more clear. So if you look here at the base of the tail beneath the vent, you can see a couple of pink lines. And those are the the hemipenes, you can see the blood in them, so we know this one is a male. And here we have a female, no pink lines here, the light just coming through white. So if I was right about my sex ratios, I ended up with two males and six females. These were incubated at 82 degrees, and uh, there you go. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like and subscribe, and click the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos about my lizards and their terraria.